Here are five of the worst weapons projects the U.S. military has in its works. The U.S. military, together with its industry partners, makes some of the finest weapons in the world, but the programs that produce them rarely run as smoothly as intended. Some of the most problematic of the military's recent projects belong to the U.S. Navy. The big problem for the Navy is that the service, just as other branches of the military have in the past, has rushed to develop platforms before the required technologies were ready, Brian Clark, a naval affairs expert, told Business Insider. Pointing to the new Zumwalt-class destroyers and the Ford-class supercarriers. We still have technology that's not fully mature even though the ship has been delivered, he said, advising the service to slow things down and mature the technology rather than build an entire platform around an idea. The issue is not unique to the Navy, though. The Army is rethinking innovation at the newly established Army Futures Command in the wake of past development failures, such as the Comanche helicopter or Crusader self-propelled artillery. Here are five troubled projects the U.S. military is desperately trying to get sorted right now. Number 1. F-35 Lightning II Joint Strike Fighter The single-engine, single-seat F-35 will be manufactured in three versions, a conventional takeoff and landing variant for the U.S. Air Force, an aircraft carrier version for the U.S. Navy, and a short takeoff vertical landing version for the U.S. Marine Corps and the U.K. Royal Air Force and Royal Navy. The requirements for the Joint Strike Fighter are complex. From the start, it must reach new heights of lethality but be affordable. It must be survivable during the rigors of combat and supportable from austere environments. All the while, the F-35 JSF must meet all these diverse needs of multiple services and still be affordable. U.S. Air Force Lieutenant General Chris Bogdan briefed Trump on the F-35 program a week later. The presentation highlighted the program's troubled past, which includes premature production problems, ballooning costs, delivery delays, and numerous technical challenges, among other issues, the drive reported. The Air Force presentation concluded that it's difficult to overcome a troubled past, but the program is improving. Still, problems persist. The Pentagon's latest operational testing and evaluation assessment noted continued reliability and availability issues, and according to Bloomberg, the lifetime program cost for the world's most expensive weapons program has grown to $1.196 trillion. Acting Secretary of Defense Patrick Shanahan has colorfully described the F-35 program as effed up. Number 2. Zumwalt Class Destroyer Developed under the DDX Destroyer program, the Zumwalt Class Destroyer DDG-1000 is the lead ship of a class of next-generation multi-mission surface combatants tailored for land attack and littoral dominance with capabilities that defeat current and projected threats. DDG-1000 will triple naval surface fires coverage as well as tripling capability against anti-ship cruise missiles. DDG-1000 has a 50-fold radar cross-section reduction compared to current destroyers, improved strike group defense tenfold, and has ten times the operating area in shallow water regions against mines. For today's warfighter, DDG-1000 fills an immediate and critical naval warfare gap, meeting validated Marine Corps fire support requirements. The U.S. Navy has invested two decades and tens of billions of dollars into the development of these advanced warships which lack working guns and a clear mission. The two 155mm guns of the advanced gun system are incredibly expensive to fire. One long-range land attack projectile costs around $1 million. Procurement was shut down two years ago, leaving the Zumwalt without any ammunition. The guns never provided the desired range anyway, so now the Navy is talking about possibly scrapping the guns entirely. The Zumwalt has also struggled with engine and electrical problems, as well as a potential loss of stealth capabilities due to the use of cost-saving bolt-on components. While the Navy had planned to field more than 30 Zumwalt-class destroyers, the service now plans for only three. Number 3. Literal Combat Ship 
The Littoral Combat Ship LCS, is a new family of surface ships for the U.S. Navy. The LCS is a fast, highly maneuverable, networked surface combat ship, which is a specialized variant of the family of U.S. future surface combat ships known as DDX. LCS is designed to meet the urgent requirement for shallow draft vessels to operate in the littoral coastal waters to counter growing potential asymmetric threats of coastal mines, quiet diesel submarines, and the potential to carry explosives and terrorists on small, fast armed boats. The littoral combat ship LCS, sometimes referred to as Little Crappy Ship, has suffered from uncontrolled cost overruns, delivery delays, and various mechanical problems. The Navy has pumped around $30 billion over roughly 20 years into this project, which was started to create an inexpensive vessel that was small, fast, and capable of handling a variety of missions in coastal waterways. The littoral combat ship was specifically designed to carry out anti-submarine warfare, mine countermeasure, and surface warfare missions in contested littoral waters. But there have been a lot of problems with the modular mission packages designed to be loaded aboard. There are also concerns that the ships are not survivable in high-intensity conflict and that they are not sufficiently armed to perform their missions, according to the most recent Department of Defense Operational Testing and Evaluation Assessment. While the Navy initially aimed to build a fleet of 55 ships, the literal combat ship order has been reduced to 35. The Navy has struggled to deploy the ships it already has, is currently looking at new missile frigates to replace the literal combat ship. Number 4. Ford Class Aircraft Carrier USS Gerald R. Ford CVN-78 is the lead ship of her class of United States Navy aircraft carriers. The ship is named after the 38th President of the United States, Gerald Ford, whose World War II naval service included combat duty aboard the light aircraft carrier Monterey in the Pacific Theater. The $13 billion USS Gerald R. Ford aircraft carrier continues to suffer from a variety of problems, even as the Navy moves forward with plans to build more Ford-class supercarriers. The Ford was expected to be delivered to the fleet this summer, but delivery has been delayed until at least October due to persistent problems with the weapons, elevators, and the propulsion system. This is not the first time the powerful ship has been delayed. The massive flat top has also had problems with basic requirements of an aircraft carrier, launching and recovering planes. The most recent Department of Defense assessment called attention to the poor or unknown reliability of systems critical for flight operations. President Donald Trump has repeatedly criticized, occasionally at inappropriate times, the new electromagnetic catapults, which still don't work correctly, just as he was critical of the rising F-35 costs. Trump has also frequently slammed the ballooning costs of the Ford-class carriers. Number 5. Electromagnetic Naval Railgun The problem with the railgun was that the Navy began pouring time and money into research and development without really considering whether or not the weapon was a worthwhile investment militarily. The railgun, which the Navy has invested more than a decade and over $500 million in developing, suffers from rate-of-fire limitations, significant energy demands, and other troubling technological problems that make this weapon a poor replacement for existing guns or missile systems. It's not useful military technology, Clark previously told Business Insider. You're better off spending that money on missiles and vertical launch system cells than you are on a railgun. Chief of Naval Operations Admiral John Richardson described the railgun project as a lesson in what not to do during a talk earlier this year. When asked about the program, the best answer he could offer was, it's going somewhere, hopefully.